What's your slogan right now? RuPaul is... I think it's still, RuPaul is everything. Absolutely. Now let the music play. RuPaul Charles is here to slay. Hello, hello, hello. The host of the hit series, RuPaul's Drag Race. I can't wait to see how this turns out. The beloved LGBTQ plus icon, pushing boundaries for decades. Fans saying because of RuPaul, they feel more accepted and comfortable in their own skin. All while becoming the most famous drag queen in the world. and the most awarded black artist in Emmy's history. We have released into the wild hundreds of drag queens. Did a young RuPaul imagine the level of stardom you have achieved? No, not, not to this level. Now, he's sharing his story like never before in his new memoir, The House of Hidden Meanings. The House of Hidden Meanings really uncovers your origin story mm -hmm. and layers of your life that we've never seen before. So why did you decide that now was the time to kind of peel back the curtain? I was able to forge a path for myself with so much love and support. And I wanted to tell that story and I wanted to let young people know that there is a way to navigate these difficult, difficult waters. He's opening up about the heartbreak in his childhood, overcoming substance abuse, and becoming a drag queen television titan. What if I made it so fun, so likable, so family friendly that you could show it to your grandmother? Two spoonfuls of Dinah Ross, a pinch of Cher, a shake of Dolly Parton, all sealed with Walt Disney's family friendliness. The early years helping shape the superstar to who he is today, growing up in a tense household in 1960s San Diego. You know, there's one scene in the book where my, my parents are acting all crazy. My mother got angry at my father for, you know, philandering around, and she poured gasoline all over his car and said, I will light this on fire because you're so angry at him. But the whole neighborhood, and my sisters and I included, were across the street watching the scene unfold. Both parents could have died. Our house could have burned down. I want to talk about your mother. Okay. Ooh, hoo, hoo. Yeah, yeah. She did not hold back. Yeah, she didn't. I, I, you know, I got to tell you, I loved her so much. Mm. I liked her a lot. She liked me. And she didn't like a lot of people. <laughs> She was so, um, so real. And I'm really both my mother and my father. You know, my public persona is very charming like my father. And uh, my mother is very, uh, in was very introverted and very um, suspicious. And I'm that too. I'm all of those things. And your mom knew, your mom knew way back who you were, yeah. and that you were gay. She was able to recognize the truth when she saw it. So she had no judgment about that. She wasn't like, you're going to go to hell. or She wasn't like that at all. And she knew that who I was and am is authentic and true. His parents divorcing when RuPaul was only seven years old. His father leaving the home. I read where you'd be on the porch. Yeah. Waiting for him. And he would not come. Mm -hmm. And there came a time that you said, you know what? That's his loss. Yeah. Have you healed from that? It was my deepest wound, and through therapy and building trust with that child who still lives inside of me, I've been able to heal myself. Amid those painful early years, a bright spot, a young RuPaul drawn to the glow of television. I love The Carol Burnett Show. Sorry. I love Cher, always. I loved everything about television. I think it has something to do with this. It's a community, it's a tribal community of laughter and of shared experiences. When I was like 11, 12 on PBS, they used to show Monty Python's Flying Circus show. And I thought, those are my people. Those are my, I must go and find my people. Because they were irreverent, they were funny. They didn't take life too seriously, which I knew from an early age, that's the ticket. Moving to Atlanta in his teenage years, he spent time appearing on a public access television program, The American Music Show. If they don't treat me no better, no how, no way, Atlanta, Georgia, right here. Yes, sir. 
the experience propelling him forward. You have to put yourself out there. I've done so many things where I thought, where I was awful, I was terrible, but I had to put myself out there because I knew that my destiny was waiting for me. His destiny, picking up gigs from Atlanta to New York, persevering through periods of homelessness, and finally finding success, releasing the hit song Supermodel in 93. and appearing on MTV News, a moment he watched with his mother. Right before she died, she got to see the very beginning of my becoming famous. Um, she was literally on her deathbed, and I had told her, you know, let's watch MTV because there's a report that's coming on um, uh, of me. Everybody is a drag queen. I mean, you're born naked and the rest is drag. So we watched it, and she said, Rue, you are crazy, which was the greatest compliment coming from her. And uh, she got to see that her, everything that she had said would happen for me was, was happening. But the price of stardom came with pitfalls. You don't hesitate about talking about being at a time dependent on drugs. Mm -hmm. And you really go there in telling the story in various times and periods of your life. What was it like for you in writing this to sit back in those dark times again? Well, because I am still in a 12-step program, it has prepared me to, to accept life on life's terms. And so all of that stuff led me to where I am today. I needed to go through that. Finding sobriety alongside his husband, George Labar. He's my favorite person I've ever met. So does it feel different being married after? No, 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 no. We were destined to be together. We tried to split up. It just wasn't gonna happen. It's good when you find your person. It's the greatest gift I've ever been given in my life. No joke, it really is. Now, RuPaul is on a level all his own. The undisputed queen of drag, as he so famously reminded Jimmy Fallon in 2020. This was gigantic. This is the first time a drag queen has ever been put on the uh, cover A drag of queen? A drag queen? I am the queen of drag. <laughs> and the drag race empire now spanning the globe. You have 16 highly acclaimed seasons, 29 Emmys, several spinoffs. Did you ever imagine having this kind of impact? with the show. I did not imagine that the show would be as, as popular and impactful mm -hmm. as it has been, but I am so grateful that it is because we get to hear these, these stories of these young people who are so courageous and so brilliant. And we really hold a mirror up to them so that they can see how brilliant they are. Each episode <laughs> always ending with his mantra, of self-respect. And remember, if you can't love yourself, how in the hell you gonna love somebody else? Because if you can't love yourself, how in the hell you gonna, gonna, gonna love somebody, somebody else? else? Someone pick it up the book. What is it that you want them to be able to take away to let them realize the superpower they have within themselves as you were able to do? The book is a handbook, a guide, a how-to, find, your own truth. Learn how to know what it is you came here to do. What can you bring to the party? Life is a party, then you better bring something, otherwise you won't be invited back. <laughs> <laughs> you are still getting this party started. Our thanks to Robin. RuPaul's memoir, The House of Hidden Meanings, is out now. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.